So Tom, how did you end up in a toilet in Bermondsey? Um, I've decided to spend the uh, whole uh, evening in a toilet in Bermondsey because I'm exhibiting in a, at my solo show upstairs and I thought it'd be good to spend the whole night in the toilet where I can give each person, each member of the audience, one minute of my time. Oh. Uh, one minute each. One minute. One minute. Well, one it's minute. the only place that's quiet. Obviously. Absolutely. Naturally. Well, it's a perfect... Going crazy upstairs. Absolutely. Um, tell us a bit about the journey for the show. Like, where, when it started, how did you get the funding, how did it start, all that kind of stuff. Funding came from Deutsche Bank. I won a Deutsche Bank award whilst I was graduating from the World College of Arts and I was granted £10,000 for a proposed project and the project being an insure, taking a hearse, uh, taking a grandfather clock in a hearse from London to Geneva and destroying the grandfather clock at the centre of the Large Hadron Collider in CERN and the works in the show are a result of what I've made on the way yeah. so they don't necessarily directly depict the grandfather clock or the hearse or that idea of destroying time no. But they they do reference it. Yeah, because one of the things I notice is actually there is no grandfather clock. There, in is, there is no grandfather clock. <laughs> Keep it out. <laughs> no, I think what the show references more so is the uh, the sun. So there are many more references of um, objects higher up in the air. There's a certain uh, there's a, an umbrella that's orange mm. that I suspended high up to become a sun, and I steal oranges which are circular and. and uh, so orange in colour. Mm. So I think mean, there are a lot more references naturally to the sun than there are to measure time or ground clocks. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the things you do quite a lot in a lot of the your work is you take objects and you throw them or you shake them. <laughs> yeah. so, well, yeah. Why do you do that? I don't know. I I I at the moment I can only put it down to we canicky. This this idea that that you can be naughty without breaking things. Now, if I broke a branch of a tree, that's naughty. Yeah. If I shake it till all the petals come off, yeah. it's okay. That's just, that's just wrong, but yeah. okay. And one of your pictures up there, is the, the circles one, which I really like, is, can you explain how the circles were produced? So throwing a, um, in Liechtenstein, um, throwing, a, throwing a rock that I found from one side of the, um, the, the, uh, the image to the other, and every time it landed on, on the other side, I draw a chalk circle around it, and then I walk across the other side and throw it back into, into where I just it from and draw a circle. It's kind of reminiscent of the punk, mm. the game. Yep, the punk. Where, where, where you boule, play, boule, boule, if you come from Marseille. <laughs> where, where you, uh, where you, where you uh, play one end and play the other end. Yeah. So you play one end or the other end, and, mm. and maybe this is where it came from. I play, I play a lot, yeah. but uh, maybe not. I I found the rock and a path. So there's a lot of randomness in there. Yeah, yeah, it's all um, thought up. Divide. Nothing's preconceived or what's going to happen. I don't know. I very rarely sit in a studio or, or a, a house or somewhere and go, I'm going to go out and do this. Yeah. If I'm out and something happens, then it happens and it gets recorded. Yeah. And this is kind of the way, the way I work. Cool. And then you mentioned the oranges and then the video you shot there. You went to plays, you went to Monaco. Yeah, yeah. And you decided to steal oranges. Yeah. Well, yeah, wandering through Monaco, I, yeah, I, had, I took lunch. It was the most awful day I've ever spent uh, the rain in Monaco. I've only spent one day in Monaco, half an hour day. And it rained continuously. But we, we had lunch and we were wandering back to the car and going, oh, this is like, Monaco's been crap. It's raining, it's raining. So what we did in the end was, um, uh, as I was wandering back to the car, I found, I found a piece of a brush, a mm. broom, and I took it with me, thinking, oh, something can happen, who knows, this is a kind of a good find. And then there's, there's this orange tree, and was, it's too tempting just to throw it and, and, and scrump. Uh, maybe it's because I'm from the West Country, and we're known for scrumping apples, yeah. like scrumping being the term for stealing apples. Uh, that aren't on your property, yeah. banging them up and taking them home to make cider or make a pie, depending on the apples you, stay, you take. And in the video, you get caught, don't you? Yeah, by an old darling. Yes. <laughs> yeah, an old dear. Yeah, yeah, she's wonderful. Uh, yeah, she was, she was telling me um, that I can take as many of the oranges as I want because the owners aren't at home <laughs> and, and that they're unedible. <laughs> Which is brilliant because that's not what people would expect. No, 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 no. Uh, 
and the only they expect the lady to be telling me off yeah. if he was doing anything. And and in fact, he was, was encouraging me. Uh, yeah, and uh, um, and from mm. I was talking to your your friend upstairs, the guy who drove your hearse. Oh, Jim. Jim. Yeah, Jim. And the he chauffeur. told me you weren't supposed to be. No, at no. The the, in Cannes, we weren't allowed in the swimming pool. The swimming pool was shut for the season, and we'd. Um, Hop over the fence with the. Uh, I'd hop over the fence. One of the guys would pass with camera, tripod, mm. run across, set it up, focus in, then I'd hop out, run around with an orange. In fact, an orange that I stole from Monaco, and I'd throw the orange. And as it splashed, one of the one of the guys who were assisting would um, photograph. Mm. Uh, we did this twice. Yeah. We did it once. Then we had to fish the orange back out the pool to shoot it again. Okay. You only had one orange. No, we had two oranges, but we didn't want the orange floating in the pool. And I right. shot orange, but didn't ever shoot. Okay. So we we then go across and do it again, and um, and then by this time someone came across and said to us in the pool like, "What are you guys doing in the pool? You're not allowed in the pool. Stay out of the pool." So we had to step. So we had two chances, and in fact, both of them were perfect. So. Two more questions. Yep. Um, yeah, your, your minutes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> um, how long does the show go on for? It goes on till October the seventh. 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 Fifth. Fifth. October the fifth. Ask the question again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's good. October the fifth. Bang. Because the whole show is about the kind of time anyway. Yeah, so. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I don't even I don't even know what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> we can a key. We can a key. It, it is the, the what very is we can a key. We can a key is the, the the very act of climbing a cherry blossom tree in full bloom and shaking it until it has no more blossom on it. No one can really tell you off. But they can look bad down at you badly. Mm. So you're not, you're not acting right. That's really also, um, like uh, upstairs in one of the photos, I, uh, I climb on the four and a half thousand year Avery Same Circle. It's just outside Oxford, Avery Same Circle. Mm. I climb on one of the rocks to take a photo, and a, a, a young lady from the National Trust came up and said, "Excuse me, sir. I don't. I'm not. Um, I don't have to tell you. Well, I'm not allowed to tell you that you have to get off the rocks, but you shouldn't be on the rocks." <laughs> So like, okay, does that mean I can stay? And that's kind of the anarchy that I, yeah. I exist within, you know, like where I can do it. I'm on the fringes, I'm on the fence, you know, nothing too, too radical, but. And one question I remember is, on your journey, you didn't go directly to CERN, and you also met people along the way. So can you tell us a bit about that, like who you met, where um. you went? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I travelled a bit around Europe, eight countries in the end. So we went to Wales first. Wales. Um, so you're from Wales? Uh, uh, I'm from Bristol, ah. but I studied in Wales. Okay. So I know a few people up there that I thought I'd go and visit in the Harris. And we did a bit of touring around places that we know, people that we know in different cities. Uh, for, for contacts to stay with, that was a, a good night. Um, and we, we met, most of the people we met. Didn't you meet a professor? Oh, yeah, in, uh, in Oxford, before we left England, we, we met a number of people. I met Julian Barber, who wrote a book, um, um, who wrote a book about this was the idea of measured time. So mm. Time does not exist. It's really exciting. He's a theoretical um, physicist from Oxford um, University. Brilliant guy, uh, talking about time and the non-existence of it. It's really exciting. And these kind of people indirectly influence the works. So as yeah. we went around and spoke to people, every time we met someone, they'd be like, where have you got a grandfather clock in a hearse? And where are you driving? Mm. And so we told them the story of destroying this clock and then the idea of living a life without time. Mm. And wildly, on our way, on our travels around, we, we always had to park in a recreational vehicle like camper van slots. You had this much time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we had to park in like camper van slots. Because our, our hearse was so long. Yeah. So we'd always park in, camp uh, park in camper van spots, and people who park in camper van spots were often retired, driving around Europe, and these people were absolutely brilliant because they didn't know what day it was or what time it was, and they just drove around where they wanted, and, and kind of we, we found ourselves more in tune with retired people driving around in camper vans than anyone else in Europe. Yeah. It's, it's a good place to be. So what not worrying about time is a, is a kind of freedom? Yeah, a little bit. A tiny bit more than normal. <laughs> <laughs> it's not much more, but it's a tiny bit more. And often, and often we have to work by it, you know, yeah, all yeah. of us do, but uh, I had to get the show up for today. How did you get permission to bury a grandfather clock? <laughs> uh, I didn't get permission to bury a grandfather clock, so. 
Yeah. So I didn't bury a ground pound clock at CERN, I destroyed a ground pound clock at CERN. Ah. So it, I, I separated it into its fundamental components the measuring device, the pendulum, the frame, the front, the back, <laughs> um, uh, face. And then these parts were all um, spread, spread around CERN in, in more poetic gestures. Okay. So pen kind of the pendulum's now um, tied to a, a rope, just swinging in a, in a brook. Okay. And the sundial, the, 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 the clock face became a sundial by turning the hands directly up. Cool. So yeah. So it, 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 it lives on. It lives on. It lives on. Absolutely. Just in, in its elementary parts.